Trump announces new tariffs, 10% on $300 billion in goods, because of China's broken promises and Beijing's seven deadly sins. Is there any hope for a trade deal? Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. President Trump is disappointed that the Chinese Communist Party has been dragging its claws on trade talks. So, last week, Tariff Man said he plans to slap new tariffs on China. The U.S. will start on September 1st putting a small additional tariff of 10% on the remaining $300 billion of goods and products coming from China into our country. That would be in addition to the existing 25% tariff on $250 billion in Chinese goods. And it would mean that basically all goods coming into the U.S. from China would now have a tariff. For American consumers, there's good news and bad news. Products that were spared in previous rounds of tariffs will now be hit. That includes smartphones, clothing, toys, and video games. But fear not, Fortnite fans. According to Trump's trade advisor, Peter Navarro, American consumers won't feel the pain because China will absorb the tariffs by slashing their prices and by devaluing their currency. But would they really do that? Well, on Monday, China's central bank set its exchange rate at a weaker level than 6.9 yuan to the dollar for the first time since December. And the offshore yuan sank to a record low. That means the yuan devalued against the dollar, which makes Chinese exports cheaper. So even though there will be tariffs, the cheaper cost of Chinese exports would mean the price American consumers pay will be essentially the same, which means China is absorbing the cost of the tariffs. But the Chinese central bank can't keep that up forever, or they will wreck their own economy. But that's a topic for another video. Back to the tariffs, which Trump announced on, where else? Twitter. Our representatives have just returned from China, where they had constructive talks having to do with a future trade deal. We thought we had a deal with China three months ago, but sadly, China decided to renegotiate the deal prior to signing. U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin and Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer had gone to Shanghai to breathe life into the half-dead trade talks, but apparently it was more like trying to give CPR to a zombie. Trump was maybe just being polite when he called the trade talks constructive because insiders told the Wall Street Journal that the Shanghai trade talks were brief and unproductive. Which is at least better than long and unproductive, like getting a master's degree at NYU. On the plus side, while visiting Shanghai, Lighthizer and Mnuchin probably got to eat those fancy little soup dumplings. So America's trade guys returned from China after being told essentially that the Chinese Communist Party would not agree to the U.S.'s demands. And then Tariff Man did what Tariff Man does. He announced the new 10% tariffs on Twitter. Trump is upset about what he feels are two broken promises. Back in December, Trump had met with Chinese leader Xi Jinping at the G20. And afterwards, the White House said China agreed to purchase a very substantial amount of agricultural and other products from the United States. This did not happen. The White House also said China would stop the illegal exports of fentanyl. That's the synthetic opioid that's played a big part in America's deadly drug epidemic. Xi Jinping, in a wonderful humanitarian gesture, has agreed to designate fentanyl as a controlled substance, meaning that people selling fentanyl to the United States will be subject to China's maximum penalty under the law. Well, there wasn't much of a humanitarian gesture after all. Fentanyl has continued to flow from China into the United States. Although to be fair to the communist regime, if you read China's official statements from the G20, China technically only agreed to work to open its market to U.S. agricultural products and start working to adjust fentanyl-related regulations. It's like when you tell your wife, I'll start working on considering mowing the lawn. She can never prove you didn't start working on considering it. But technicalities don't mean much to Trump, since at the end of the day, the Chinese Communist Party is still not buying enough American goods, and Chinese fentanyl is still killing Americans. Hence the new tariffs. And that's also why the enforcement mechanism for any future U.S.-China trade deal has been a critical sticking point. According to experts cited by the South China Morning Post, given the lack of transparency of the Chinese economy and Beijing's history of breaking previous pledges, 
the U.S. side wants enforcement to be quote-unquote painful. At a February hearing on the House Committee on Ways and Means, Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer hinted at just what kind of pain the U.S. has in mind. We are very aware of the history of our trading relationship with China and the disappointments that have resulted from promises that were not kept, Lighthizer said. The enforcement process will be very specific. It will have layers, it will have time frames, it will have reaction. Experts say that the U.S. wants to do something called a snapback, which sounds like when you say, oh snap, after delivering a clever clapback. But actually, it's a unilateral verification system. The snapback option would let the U.S. review whether China is keeping its side of the bargain. Tariffs on Chinese goods would be removed, but if China breaks the agreement, the U.S. would just snap them back into place. For example, a key goal for the U.S. is to reduce its trade deficit with China. But if, let's say, the reduction targets are not met by a certain date, the tariffs would automatically snap back into place. Now, it should come as no surprise that the Chinese regime does not like this snapback option. They would prefer a trade dispute system like the one used at the World Trade Organization, where representatives from each side have to agree on the enforcement. You know, the same mechanism that's been in place for decades, where the Chinese regime can keep cheating with no consequences. In fact, WTO dispute resolutions often drag on for years, and that's perfect. Because in its trade talks with the U.S., the Chinese Communist Party can just run out the clock. See, Trump only has at most six more years in office, but Xi Jinping gets to be presentator for life. Which is why Trump is not likely to agree to anything without strong enforcement. And what needs enforcing? Well, it's what White House trade advisor Peter Navarro calls Beijing's seven deadly sins. Stop stealing our intellectual property. Stop forcing technology transfers. Stop hacking our computers and stealing our trade secrets. Stop dumping into our markets and putting our companies out of business. Stop state-owned enterprises from heavy subsidies. Stop the fentanyl and stop the currency manipulation. Of course, the Chinese Communist Party doesn't know about the seven deadly sins. They never went to Catholic school. Or watch that weird Brad Pitt movie from the 90s. I suggest using a more awkward Chinese communist propaganda name, like the seven stops. Not that that would actually stop them. In fact, in response to Trump announcing the new tariffs, Chinese authorities devalued their currency, which makes it harder for U.S. companies to sell stuff in China. And they ordered Chinese state-owned companies to stop importing U.S. agricultural goods. And then China's U.N. delegate Zhang Jun blasted Trump's tariff threat as an irrational, irresponsible act. And we do oppose that uh, such a decision uh, has been made. And we definitely will take whatever necessary countermeasures to protect our fundamental right. Yes, the Communist Party has a fundamental right to not be punished for cheating on trade. Still, Trump is part carrot, part stick when it comes to negotiating with China. Trump tweet-fed a bit of carrot, saying he'll continue positive dialogue. And referring to Xi Jinping as his friend. And the stick? Well, after the Chinese central bank let the UN fall, which the central bank says had nothing to do with the tariffs, the U.S. Treasury Department immediately did what Trump had promised to do as his first thing in office, label China a currency manipulator. Now, practically speaking, officially calling China a currency manipulator doesn't do much for now. But it is a heck of a snapback. So what do you think about Trump's new threat to impose tariffs on China? Leave your comments below. And now, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a patron who supports China Uncensored with a dollar or more per episode through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Philip Conway asks, did the Chinese Communist Party get a grip of Italy just so they can get a hold of their ice cream, even though it's not quite as good as the Russian type. The Communist Party wanted Italy to join the Belt and Road not for the ice cream, but for the political influence, also the ports. Italy is one of the world's top 10 economies. Plus, the Belt and Road is a great way for the Chinese regime to make more European countries more dependent on Chinese money. And that gives them more sway over European politics. Also, I know that Xi Jinping enjoys his Russian ice cream, but 
I'm not convinced it's better than gelato. I'll have to try it next time I go to Moscow or Brighton Beach. What's that, Shelly? Oh, yes. Shelly is going to Italy in a month. So if you have any tips on who she should talk to for information on China's growing influence in Italy, email us at ChinaUncensored at gmail.com. Thanks for your question, Phil. And thank you to everyone who's watching. Your support of a dollar or more through Patreon helps us keep this show going. Thanks for watching. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time.